G'day, I'm Dr. Casey from the Sir Charles Gardner Hospital Emergency Department and I'm here to talk to you about a new strategy which has come about as the result of the publication of the PREOXY trial by an American group of trialists and this is a really interesting piece of research because we think that it may change the way that we do preoxygenation and airway management for our critically ill patients in the emergency department. All right, so when would we consider using this non-invasive ventilation strategy for preoxygenation of our critically ill patients prior to intubation? Well, we can pretty much use it for all of the patients that we have in the emergency department, with the exception of people that need a crash intubation, the ones where you don't have a couple of minutes to preoxygenate adequately and set up all your kit to do this. The main benefit of this in the trial was there was a really significant reduction in the rate of critical hypoxia in this group of patients. And this took all ED comers, but mainly patients that had sick lung disease and the obese patients seemed to benefit more. So there was a much lower rate of critical hypoxia during the intubation period. So I think this is something that we should strongly consider for most of our ED intubations. There are a couple of contraindications that you need to be aware of. I've just mentioned the crash intubation. This hasn't been trialled in pregnant women, so we don't know what the data is there. And obviously if someone's got facial trauma, which would preclude the use of a non-invasive mask, or if they're actively vomiting or hematemesis, that obviously isn't going to work with non-invasive ventilation. But other than that, most of the patients we can consider it in the ED. So the first thing we need to do is to set the patient up for non-invasive ventilation. You may want to consider using a nasopharyngeal airway because that will come in handy later during the apneic period, just since it's going to show us how we'll fit the patient's mask for NIV. So we need to get the right size mask to fit the patient and you also might want to think about shaving a beard or getting rid of anything that might um, interrupt the seal. We can use this little measurement tool that's found with the BiPAP kit and we'll just line it up to between his eyes and below the lips and I've got this patient at a medium. The next step is to hold up the mask to their face just so they can get used to the pressure and give them a few minutes like that. And then after they feel like they're ready to tolerate it, we can lift him forward, pop the straps between behind his head and then just clip it on. And you wanna make sure it's nice and tight so that you're getting a good seal. So the next step is to set your BiPAP settings. So at first we're going to select what gender we've got and what we estimate his height's going to be and that will auto-calculate our ideal body weight. Uh, in conjunction with your doctor, you're going to clarify your ventilation orders. So we're going to go with a PEEP of 5, a PEINCE of 5, which will give us an IPAP of 10 and 100% oxygen with a backup rate of 10. All right, so how do we actually go about using this NIV setup for pre-oxygenation? Well, it's the same really as what we've always done with pre-oxygenating our patients. So we recommend you go through the same processes. Use the pre-oxygenation pre-intubation checklist, get your team ready, have your plans all in place ready to go, because this isn't going to change any of the airway intubation plans that we would normally use. So once we've got our mask on, the patient's comfortable and the settings going on the vent, you can consider giving the patient a small dose of uh, sedative or analgesia if they're struggling with the mask, but essentially you just want them to have a good, at least three solid minutes of pre-oxygenation before you push any intubation drugs through. Once you've gotten to that point, you've passed the three minute point, this is when you're gonna give your standard intubation drug agent. So whether that's rocuronium and propofol or whatever's most suitable to this particular clinical situation. And then we're then entering the phase where we would normally use apneic oxygenation. This is where this protocol varies more from our traditional approach. So as the patient stops breathing and the muscle relaxant kicks in, we're going to have to support their airway by doing a jaw thrust and holding their airway open. And once again, if we have a nasopharyngeal in, that will facilitate the patency of the airway. And we keep the airway in this position, holding their jaw thrusted throughout the period where they're not actively breathing and the ventilator will take over that 10 breaths per minute of ventilation throughout this period until we're ready to go with our actual intubation attempt. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that demonstration and found it really useful. As with all things we do in emergency medicine, this is just another strategy, another way that we can do what is already excellent care, maybe a little bit better. And this is something we're gonna work on as a team and hopefully improve our strategies in order to get the best outcomes for our patients.